everybody, it's Mariana with Three Peaks Classroom. If this is your first time on my channel, welcome. I like to make helpful videos for teachers, specifically Canadian teachers. So in today's video, I want to shine a spotlight on a resource that I use extensively in my classroom to help me teach all of my writing units and outcomes in either grades three or four. And that resource is my writer's notebook. Now I did a video previously about two years ago, I did a video on my reader's notebook, but that is since outdated because I have updated all of my notebooks to reflect the brand new changes happening that have happened in the grade three curriculum. I also have a grade four language arts notebook as well. And I will be updating that uh, in the year coming just cause uh, the grade four curriculum is going to change here next year. But for today's video, for the purpose of today's video, I'm going to show you the language arts notebook, but specifically, I'm just going to talk about the writer's notebook. So in today's video, I'm going to show you why I love using this resource so much, how I model and teach a lesson from my resource, and of course, why I came up with it. So let's start with that. Why did I come up with this writer's notebook resource? Well, I taught preschool for six years before I decided to jump up to grade three. I moved schools, we were moving houses, and I wanted to decide, I decided I wanted to switch grades as well. So I just, I jumped up into grade three. I was excited for the change, but really quickly after I had set up my classroom, decorated it, got my bulletin boards up, it really quickly dawned on me that I had no idea what to teach in language arts. Like I know I have the program of studies, but you're reading the program of studies and it doesn't automatically translate like, oh, I need to teach a lesson or I need to teach a unit on fictional writing, fictional narratives, or yeah, I know I, I'm gonna have to teach some kind of poetry, but I'm not sure exactly what to teach. So I suddenly felt woefully unprepared and I actually began cursing my undergrad program thinking, how did I manage to even become a teacher? How did they even graduate me if I don't know what to teach in language arts? And you guys, I have a master's degree in elementary education and half of my courses were specifically on language arts instruction. So how could I feel so unprepared to teach language arts in grade three? That's because I had no idea how to structure my language arts. I just saw all of these outcomes and I had no idea what to do. I literally felt like I was walking around the school in a fog, in a daze, like everybody else around me was swimming and they knew exactly what they were supposed to be doing, but I was just like a deer in headlights, no idea what I was supposed to do. It wasn't until I had the opportunity to see another grade three teacher teach in her classroom and she showed me a similar kind of resource that she had, but it was made from a, an American publisher and so she still used it in her class because she liked how everything was arranged, but she said that it's really frustrating for her because it was always um, with the American standards. And she lamented how she wished that there was a Canadian version. Now I know our outcomes here in Canada, they're all provincially based. So I thought, hmm, I'd love to use that kind of a resource, but yeah, I think I could make like a version to use in Alberta instead. So it took me literally a few years to fine tune this resource. But by my third year of teaching grade three, so that was like in my ninth year of teaching, I was finally feeling confident in teaching, reading, writing, grammar, or whatever, because of this resource that I had made for my personal classroom. I know exactly what outcome to teach for writing. I know exactly the units that I have to teach and the order that I could teach them in. So when I opened up my shop in 2020, these language arts notebooks were one of the very first products that I had in my store in addition to my year plans. And it's still a best selling item now years later. And that's because I imagine a lot of teachers find themselves in a similar situation like I was when I began teaching grade three, you know, deer in headlights. What on earth am I supposed to teach? Just before I go any further into the episode, I want you to know that you can find these notebooks or my year plans or bundled together to make your life easier teaching grade three or grade four. You can find all of that in my TPT shop. I will link it down below in case you're interested, but just know if you're looking for what I'm talking about, it's in my TPT shop. So I wanna dive into my writer's notebook right off the bat here. So I'm opening up my grade three version and here's my writing notebook or my writer's notebook. My writer's notebook covers all 
43 outcomes in the brand new Alberta um, and the brand new Alberta curriculum. But if you are teaching outside of Alberta, but you really like this resource, just know that my outcomes and my titles on my pages, they are all completely editable. So if you like the look of the notebook and if you like the, uh, the structure of the notebook, but you want it to change so that it can fit your standards better, just know that these are all editable. Now, my favorite thing about the notebooks that I create are that I have these outcomes written in student-friendly I can statements. So when I introduce a lesson like where do I where do writers get their ideas from? I read the I can statement out loud to my students and tell them that we are going to be practicing this specific skill while we are writing. This is like a toolbox of tools that's going to help you to be a better writer all year long. And that all starts with at the very beginning of the year, the very first lesson that we teach is where does a writer get their idea from? If you wanted to write a poem, or a letter to a friend, a cool short story, or maybe you want to add dialogue to a cool video game that you are creating, where does the writer get the idea for the dialogue, for the letter, for the poetry? As a class together, I would give my students this title and this clip art that they have to cut out and together we would create this anchor chart together. I am working on a teacher version in the classroom that's going to be hung up, but the students are all creating their own in their notebooks that they can reference all year long. So here they cut out the title. It always goes at the top of the page. And then here we have a light bulb. We talk about how light bulbs are a symbol for an idea. And then we have a discussion like, where do you think a writer could possibly get an idea for something they might want to write about? So this notebook resource, either my writer's notebook, reader's notebook, grammar, or if I have all of them together, this resource is a must have for my parent teacher conferences or celebrations of learning. I, I need to have students show their parents because this is a wonderful way of showing parents all the explicit lessons that we have been teaching and practicing in language arts in our grade. So I think parents really like to see all of the specific lessons that are being taught as well. Now, my notebook resources don't have explicit lesson plans for each of these anchor charts to create. And the reason why I didn't include lesson plans, one, that's super, super time consuming, but two, I feel like every teacher has their own flair on how they like to approach and teach a lesson. And so I don't want to stamp out that creativity. This is basically just the foundations that you need to teach this lesson. So for example, I have a lesson here on sentence types. You would get the, the title, the I can statement, that's all in one. Plus you would get the little clip art pieces here. And then together with your class, you would be having a discussion on the different kinds of sentences. And then you would be making this uh, anchor chart for the kids to reference. And then from there, you could teach more lessons um, because you've taught the foundational lesson here in your writer's notebook. For example, I would teach my a lesson out of my writer's notebook on Tuesday mornings. You guys know that um, I have my ELA schedule up for a free download. If you want to grab one, if you haven't already grabbed my free ELA schedule, um, it's just on my website, threepeaksclassroom.com forward slash ELA schedule. There you can see how I structure my language arts on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, every day of the week. You can see exactly what I teach, the notes on how I teach it, how long I teach the lesson, but you guys know in the, in the schedule that I teach a writing, a specific writing um, lesson on Tuesday mornings. So Tuesday morning, I would be teaching about sentence types. And then every day of the week after that, I am reinforcing that concept either through daily five small group stations or a worksheet or, you know, partner work, things like that. So I start off with the explicit lesson and then the rest of the week, I am reinforcing that skill. My notebooks, my writer notebooks, it specifically lays out all of the lessons that you are going to be teaching your students throughout the entire year from September to June, but it's not laid out for you in terms of a timetable or like a, a scope and sequence. So if you want to know when you should be teaching sentence types or for how long you should be teaching those kinds of lessons, that's all included. Like the pacing is all included in my year plans. So I just have my grade three year plan here 
and I have everything laid out like in a month by month format. And my language arts is broken up into reading, writing, word wall slash phonics and my grammar lessons. And so for example, if I want to look at September, maybe the second week of September in my writer's notebook, what am I focusing on? It says sentence swag. So then I would head over to my resource and I would make sure that I have all of my materials ready to teach a lesson on sentence swag. And I know the second week of September, this is the writing skill that I'm focusing on for the entire week, that entire second week of school. It doesn't mean that I've taught it and then we're done. It means that I've introduced it that second week. We are focusing and narrowing down on this skill. And then the rest of the year, we are reinforcing this sentence swag skill. So again, if you're looking for like a pacing timeline of when you should be teaching all the lessons in the reader, writer's notebook, uh, that's all included in my um, year plan as well. And if you wanna get them bundled, if you'd like to get the notebook bundled with the year plan, so you have both of them, uh, again, that's available in my TPT store. You get the bundle together and then hand in hand. That's how I teach my language arts program. I look at what I'm supposed to teach and then I look at my resource, print the materials, and off I go onto my lesson. So thanks again for allowing me to shine a spotlight on a resource that I use extensively in my classroom. I no longer feel like I'm in that foggy cloud. I'm so glad that I know exactly what I'm teaching, when I'm teaching it. Um, I know the units that I have to cover, like a fictional narrative unit or my poetry unit or circular plot structures. That's a new outcome in the uh, curriculum this year, but I feel like I'm super prepared now that I have my notebooks and my year plan together with me. I know exactly what I'm doing. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about this specific resource or anything else that I've mentioned in the video, feel free to leave me a comment down below. I love reading your comments, your thoughts. Um, I respond to all of your questions as well. You can just leave me a comment down below. If you haven't already subscribed, I do post a video every Sunday talking about anything teaching related. So if you haven't already subscribed, you might want to consider doing that so you don't miss any videos. I appreciate you guys all so much for being here. Thank you very much. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in next week's episode. Bye.